Okay. So we're just going to quickly see, um, you have a Canon 60 Mark II, so I'll probably just adventurous. One looks good, so I'm just going to pop it on all of them and then tweak them as needed. This is just one of my presets from the um, character presets. Mm -hmm. I'm just using adventurous. Okay, so with this one, he just... So you can do these adjustments right inside Lightroom. Um, what I end up doing, you can copy. Okay. So with his skin, when I press Q, um, I see like the comparison, right? It's just easier to tell when you have it side by side. So to me, it just looks a little bit green. So I'm just going to increase the tint a little bit. And then... I see a little bit of blue, so I'm just going to increase the warmth a little bit or the temperature. So Q and, makes it go side by side? Well, in Adobe Camera. Oh, uh, we're all, you're still in there. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'm just going to um, increase the exposure on this one. So I'm just showing you the difference. Yep. And... So it did mute the tones of the lavender. So I'm just going to bring the saturation back up and the vibrancy back up. And then I'm going to go into the color mixer and see if I can adjust this back to purple. Yeah, that's good enough. Blues and purples, so. Okay. And then with this one, I'm just going to brighten it up. Okay, so are you applying presets in Lightroom? Yes. Okay. So when you bring in your pictures into Photoshop, they should be very close to being ready to just like polish off. So Photoshop is for polishing all yep. the the nitty gritty stuff should be done in Lightroom. Right. So like I noticed with a lot of your edits, um, you are not adjusting the white balance. So okay. um, they're like either really too cool or they're really bright. Um, so adjust the temperature and the tint first. As soon as you open your pictures in Lightroom. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And depending on what presets you use, you may have to adjust the white balance after you put the preset on. Okay. Okay. So like if you were to adjust the, the white balance um, in, in um, bridge, and then you were to um, add, add a preset, then it'll probably, it'll probably um, change the white balance back to what it the preset was. So you always just double check the white balance after you put the preset on. Preset in. Okay. And that's by temperature and tint. Yeah. So okay. at the top here is where you want to do that. Okay. Now, this is also this little white balance, this little yes. eye thing that is also in Lightroom. And so if this was like on a white backdrop and you just felt like, oh, it's like, it's not quite right. You can actually take that and you can hover it over like a really like a neutral gray point in the picture so let's just say that this is like gray and then it will actually choose oh. a white balance for you which obviously I don't like that so I'm going to press command z and undo that I like this I feel like it's the most natural looking it's not too warm it's not too cool the skin looks good. That's why it's also important to compare them side by side. Yeah. This is really beautiful, by the way. These Thank are really, you. really nicely styled. Okay, so now we're going to bring them into Photoshop. And how do you, do you how do you bring them all into Photoshop? That's the thing with Bridge. I just press open. Oh, That's why okay. I, I recommend using Bridge and Adobe Camera Raw because it's so easy. And I have a I have some steps in the beginner's course, like in the course that you're with yep. me, that all okay. uh, I'll find steps are listed for you. In Lightroom, you can do I think it's it's either option or command and select the ones that you want to open in Photoshop. Yep. And then you'll 
right click and it'll say edit in in that window that pops up and then it'll mm -hmm. say open in photoshop and photoshop. you just click that and it'll br bring them all over okay thanks sorry <laughs> no it's okay i'm gonna have to learn it to do what you do the bridge in adobe camera raw okay yeah you should just be able to right click it and it'll say open in photoshop okay thanks okay so now with um i'm going to show you what everything is first okay before we start editing okay so the the tools that you're going to use most in photoshop are the brush tool mm -hmm. okay um you're also going to use the patch tool which is this little it looks like a patch um this is different than this so the spot healing brush tool with the little dotty thing right there is different than this one don't use this one okay so you want to use the spot healing brush tool and the patch tool okay now this these boxes right here these are the colors of the brush and oh. the four like the front color is what the brush is is colored right now so if um if i was to draw on your picture it would be that color that's selected right here okay okay so um if you make a mistake press command z okay it'll undo it Okay, so when you are working with um, photography, you want to work in the right workspace. So go to Window, Workspace, and you can either choose Essentials, which is default, or you can choose Photography. Okay. Okay. I tend to go back and forth between Essentials and Photography. And you can also click on here on what you want to show inside your Photoshop. Okay? okay. So now we're going to look at the top here. So this is the brush. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the size of the brush. So this is going to be really big. Yep. Now, the hardness, you want it always to be at zero. Oh, okay. okay. That means the edges of the brush are going to be soft. Okay. And um, and then you can also choose the style of brush you want. Now, I just use a simple round, soft round brush. It's um, that's really all you need for what we're doing in Photoshop. Oh, the rest okay. of it is more for graphic design. Okay. Um, the size of your brush can be adjusted with, oops, with your bracket keys on your keyboard. So um, the left bracket key makes it smaller. Oh. And then the right bracket key makes it bigger. Okay. Now, when you press command plus, you zoom in. zooms in okay when you command minus it zooms out okay now with your opacity when you're running an action it's this is something you're going to play with all the time you're going to either have it at 100 percent opacity or 50 or 30 or whatever that's just the strength of what you're brushing on okay, okay. yep now the flow, think of the flow as like, if you were taking a spray can and you were spray painting, it, you know how it like sprays out, whereas mm -hmm. the center is really concentrated mm -hmm. and the outside is more like feathered. So think of that as the strength of like a spray can. So if you were going to have the flow at hundred percent, it would be like a solid stream and less of like a mist. Okay. Whereas if you were to go lower flow, it's going to be more like a mist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Versus a solid stream. Okay. I think that's the easiest way to describe it. So the edges are always going to be 
the, the more flow you have, the, the harder the edges will be. And the less flow you have, the softer it's going to be. So I'll just, we'll do an example here. Um, Cause this is really important. Oh, sorry. Ah. I mean, too many things going on. So I'm gonna have opacity at 100% and flow at 100%. I'm just gonna paint over your picture for a second. Okay. Now, if I press X on my keyboard, it's gonna turn it to white, okay? Okay. So it automatically changed the color from black to white. So if I press X again, it's gonna change it back to black. So X is something you're gonna use all the time. Changes color, okay. So whatever colors you have in those two boxes, it will switch back and forth. Usually, yeah. Okay, usually, got it. Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna have flow at like, let's say 75%. And I'm just going to make the brush smaller. Okay, so that is flow at 75%. Now I'm going to take it down to 50. Do you see the difference in strength? 50%. Mm -hmm. yep. And then um, with 25%. No. And then, um, yeah, so so that's the flow. That's to demonstrate flow. And then when you have opacity at 100% and then 50%. Mm. So it does, like, the flow and the opacity can mimic each other, but the opacity is mostly what you're going to be using most of the time. Okay. Okay, so don't you don't really have to worry about flow all too much, but that's the difference. Okay, mm -hmm. now um, when it comes to let's just say you want to see what you've been doing, let's just say um, oh, you want to check the steps that you've done. You're going to go to your history, and it's going to show you the steps. So I opened the picture, I made a layer, and I've brushed on and then I deleted it okay now let's just say that I wanted to remember this picture like with this step then I will take a snapshot mm. create new snapshot and I will label it um step one so I could do that easy okay and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the layer and let's just say I'm gonna like run an action And then I'm going to brush on it. Okay. Now I'm going to flatten it. Now I'm going to go back to my history. I'm going to take another snapshot. Okay. Step two. And this, this might help you in the beginning when you're learning Photoshop. Okay. Use, take advantage of what you're doing. Okay. So like this could be like um, skin tone. Mm right? And then the next one could be like skin smoothing. So if you decide you don't like what you just did and you want to go back a couple steps, this is better than re-editing the entire picture. Okay. okay. So like if I was to go here and click on step one, it's going to bring me back where the layer is because it's it'll take me exactly to where I left off. And then with this snapshot, it's going to show me everything. But once I run another action, it's going to delete um what's in oh no it didn't delete it yeah it does so now i'm going to just take another snapshot and and type in like um red remover or something and like at the beginning yes it'll take you a little like five extra seconds to just take a snapshot but this will give you full control over going back over your steps so that you um can fix anything that you decide oh i didn't actually like that i should have done this differently blah, blah, blah. Okay. So like example, like if I was to brush on like that and I take a snapshot before I go on to the next action and then I flatten it, then I run, let's just say this, uh, a skin smoothing action. And then I'm like, oh, dang, 
I took too much color out of her skin. Well, then I can actually go back. I'll take another oh. snapshot and I can go back and change the opacity if I want to oh. and like fully adjust it. Or like I can oh. brush it off because this layer mask right here, here, let me just make this bigger. You see this layer mask right here? Yes. Um, basically, nothing's going to show up on this action until we use a white brush and paint it on. So if you want to fix that, then you press X and paint, paint with a black brush, and then it'll bring it back. It's like erasing what you did. And But that's only, excuse me, Catherine, is that only um, if you don't flatten it, right? Because well, if you flatten it, you can't go back, can you? Unless it's in the snapshot. Mm. Oh. So okay. if, you, if you take a snapshot before you flatten, then yes, you can go back. Oh, what does okay. flatten do? Flatten just um it cleans up your space it it merges everything you've done into the file oh it also Sorry, I, didn't, will... I didn't mean to interrupt you no, no that's fine yeah so yeah but once you flatten it just like dawn said like okay i'm going to flatten it now there's nothing i can do now it's merged into the background layer now oh. if i was to fix it i would have to go back to my history and um go back to my last snapshot but if I didn't take any snapshots, there's nothing I could do about it. Oh, okay. Sometimes if you flatten once and then you do a bunch of stuff, it'll still show it in the history, but it doesn't stay there for a super long time. That's why taking a snapshot is important. Okay. Okay, so the next is we're gonna just look at the, the um, layers and adjustments panel, okay? So right here is the background layer. Okay, so every time you open a picture, every picture it has starts with the background layer. Okay. Okay. Now, when you create a mask, or let's say you create a duplicate layer, so we're going to create a duplicate layer. So we're going to press Command J, and I'm just going to type on there duplicate layer. Okay. Let's say that I, not because we would ever do this in real life editing, but I'm just going to, just for teaching purposes, I'm going to invert this picture, okay? And then if I wanted to like paint on a certain part of the picture, then I would add a layer mask. So right down here is add layer mask. And then if I, so the if the mask is white, then you have to use a black brush to reveal what's underneath it, okay? Oh, wow. Just as an example. So, um, but if I wanted to get rid of that, then I would press X and use a white brush, you know, and then wow. it would erase what I just painted on. Okay. Now, anytime you do skin adjustments, like on her skin, you're going to do it on a duplicate layer. Okay. It's really important to do that on a duplicate layer. So with a duplicate layer, you're going to press Command J. That's the shortcut. Okay. Okay. So it's good to like write this down um, on the layer just so that you don't get confused. If like while you're learning this, maybe just keep everything in order by writing. Okay. This is the duplicate layer. Now you're going to press J and you're going to bring up the patch tool. J brings up specifically the patch tool. Well, it'll bring up any one of these three things. Oh. If it brings up one of the other ones, just click on patch tool. Okay. Okay. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to just, I'm not gonna edit this whole picture, but we're just, this is how you would do it. So you you circle and then you drag it drag to it. an area where it's got a similar texture. If you don't do that, then um like let's just say i dragged it from down here right it's going to take the texture from here and put it here yep i got that from when you were teaching it us the other week okay. last week perfect okay so we're going to skip that step then um okay so one other thing i want to show you is that with your photoshop actions when you open photoshop it's usually going to look like this right okay. so you want to open up this little this little symbol here for actions and you want to click button mode. 
okay? It just saves you time when you're working in Photoshop using button mode. Okay. Okay. And if you want to record yourself making an action, then you need to take it off of button mode. Okay. I don't think, will I be making actions already? Um, it Yes, because you can record yourself saving your pictures. You can record yourself um, running actions in order. So you could make like a workflow. Oh. So like if you, if you run the same actions on repeat, mm -hmm. then you can make an action recording yourself doing that. Okay. Put it off. So you have to take the button mode and take that off. Yeah. Okay. Or like last, last zoom, I showed you guys how to make a flatten action. Mm -hmm. You would need to take it off button mode to make any action. Okay. Okay. But I like to keep it on button mode while I'm working. It's just faster. Okay. Um, so there's a few things up here that I want you to know about. So first is I want you to know about your color profile. Because if it's not set to the right thing in Lightroom, you need to set it to the right thing. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Photoshop, Edit, and then you're going to go down to um, Assign Profile, just to make sure it's in sRGB. Lightroom, okay. Lightroom might default to a different one. It might even default to Adobe. RGB, but you want to stick to sRGB. It's the most up-to-date profile okay. for papers and labs and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if for whatever reason you've recently updated your Lightroom or updated your, your whatever, yeah. sometimes it'll reset everything to default mode. So let's just say that this was the wrong color space and you've already edited it. Then you're going to go to edit, convert to profile, mm. and just choose the right profile. Okay. You don't have to re-edit it or anything. And this has happened time and again. And yeah. it's even happened to me in the past when I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. Next, um, I want you to pay attention to your image size. Okay. So image size is very important because you want to make sure that your resolution is set to 300. Okay, resolution, okay. 300, okay. Sometimes these programs will default it to 240. So always check, everyone should always be checking to make sure that the resolution is set to 300. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, get familiar with everything in the menu because as you start to use these things, um, they're going to start making sense and you're going to start remembering, okay, how you can fix things, how you can do different things. Um, the filter is a very important one. And so if you wanted to say, let's do another adjustment in camera raw, you need to do a duplicate layer. So command J, go to filter, go to camera raw filter, and it's going to open back up camera raw. Oh, so wow. let's say that I didn't like the white balance, or let's mm -hmm. say I don't like the tone of this purple, then I can go to color mixer again, and I can actually go to hue, and I can adjust the purple. Um, and then you also want to like pick whatever colors you want, and then the saturation. Okay. Really interesting to see what colors are affected. So it was the magenta too. Okay. And then um, let's just say, okay, so let's just say that's all we wanted to do. Press okay. Um, so all those adjustments, adjustment in ACR, um, let's just say that you didn't want it to have full strength, then you could lower the opacity. Mm -hmm. um, or you could make a mask and paint it off. So press X to, to make it a black brush and then a B for brush. And you could mm -hmm. like bring it back or whatever. Okay. So we'll delete that. 
And, um, okay. So also let's go to liquify. I know that you got, um, yeah. some practice doing liquify. So we'll just mm -hmm. go over to this one here. This is like perfect, by the way. Love it. Thank you. Um, the only thing is, is that he's facing the light. So next time, next time you want to make sure that he is actually rotated this way. And I must have like a brain fart because I'm doing that all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can see the light because it's going up his nose. <laughs> yeah. So um, just be cautious of that, especially in this pose and in, well, all poses really. Yes. But very well done. This is very nice. So let's just say that, let's see one that if you need a liquefying, um, we could do this one in the back. So filter and then liquefy. Mm -hmm. So when you want to, let's just say freeze something that you don't want affected, no. there's a freeze mask tool. So let's just say that we don't want her face oh. affected by the liquefy. And do you know how many years it took me to figure this one out? <laughs> <sighs> Okay, and then you're gonna go back to the forward forward warp tool. And then you're gonna pick the size of the brush that you want to liquefy. And just um, as an example, you could push it, like we're not actually doing this for real, but I'm just, yeah, as fine. examples, you can see that it's not affecting the red because the red is frozen. So that helps when you're, when mm -hmm. you want something to not be affected by the liquefy because everything that's frozen, like, isn't going to be affected. That's it. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is great because sometimes you'll have something near the face and you don't want it to, to push in the cheeks or you don't want it to push in part of the head. You can just freeze that part of the body. Okay. Now, um, last, I'm just going to show you the adjustments. And this is a lot of information to take in. So you're going to be able to rewatch this because it's being recorded and it's in Facebook. So um, I want you to get familiar with each of these. So the there's the brightness contrast. Now, I never really use that. I always go to the levels or the curves just because I find that brightness seems to bring out the highlights too much and almost overexposes it. So I like to use the curves layer. And with curves, what you can do, it's it's very easy. You can just, because you're new to Photoshop, just click on the click and drag to modify it. So let's just say that the highlights are a little bit too bright. So we're just gonna pull it down to lower the highlights. Oh. Let's say that I want the midtones to be brought up. Well, I'm gonna come over the midtones here and I'm gonna bring it up. Hmm. And then let's just say that I want the shadows to be darker then I'm going to go to a shadowy area and I'm going to pull it down and then bam, look at that difference. Isn't mm. that nice? Like mm -hmm. the difference alone, just with a little minor adjustment in curves. So if you want to save what you did, then you can go to the top here and save your curves preset. And then you can apply that every time and make an action. You could call it oh. like Tiffany's curves you know, like, <laughs> yeah, or whatever. So um, that is real something really cool about um, curves. Another thing too, is that let's just say that you like the, um, the hazy look, then you would bring up the blacks. Oh, okay. So bringing up the blacks. And if you like that, um, where the whites are really like almost dulled, then you would bring the total right side to it wow. okay when you you can put points anywhere on the line and drag from those points oh. okay and um it's 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 a rabbit hole you could get carried yeah. away for hours doing it okay so the next really important one i would say is the color balance so with the color balance it's pretty self-explanatory if you see cyan in the skin, you're gonna add a little bit of red. If you see green in the skin, you're gonna add a little bit of magenta. If you see too much yellow, you're gonna add a little bit of blue. And the beauty of it is that you can, because it has a layer mask on it already, 
Yeah. You can invert it by pressing Command I, and it makes the black the mask black. And then you use a white brush, so you would press X on your keyboard, and then you would only apply it to whatever part of the picture you want. So in this case, we would apply it to the skin only. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm, that's all I'm going to share with you today because it's a lot of information to take in and it's going to be overwhelming. So um, if you have any questions, um, I would, I would suggest that you write them below this video in the Facebook okay. group. And then um, if you need help with anything specific, write those questions down and then we'll do the next video on that. That'd be great. Okay, so was this helpful? Do you have any Yeah, questions? very much. This is a good, this is a great start. I'm going to play with all these buttons and rewatch this. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yay. Okay, Thanks. awesome. Okay. Thanks so much for watching our Photoshop for Dummies part one. Um, what we're trying to do is just create some videos that are very simple to follow that talk about things that maybe aren't discussed in other tutorials. And if you have any other questions about my mentoring program, you can find all the information at mumtoglessons.com. I actually have an amazing mentoring program that now includes a full day with me at my studio, as well as six months um, online mentoring, as well as one month with my SEO expert. And that is an amazing value as well, because we are basically getting everything covered. So in-person workshop, I'm located in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So I'm right next to an international airport. And, um, and then I also teach you online for six months as well. And you also have lifetime access to the program on the website. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. And uh, make sure that you hop into my Facebook group, Mom Talk Educate as well as follow me on Instagram and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube.